Hi everyone, welcome back. And today's video is for you if you are an overseas doctor and you want to come and work in the UK. By the way, we uh, came to drop our son in the nursery and we thought to stop by in this beautiful place and thought to show you guys as well how beautiful it looks. You can see there is a swan and she's incubating her eggs and she's been here for last three weeks there are so many there are so many ducks as well welcome back in today's video we are going to discuss what are the requirements you need to come and work in the UK as a doctor basically the requirements General Medical Council ask for in order to give you the registration. Every doctor in the UK is working under General Medical Council registration. So there are five basic requirements you need to fulfill in order to apply for registration with GMC. So why do you need to register with GMC? If you are from Sri Lanka, GMC is like your SLMC. GMC is responsible for giving licensing to doctors and responsible for doctors in training as well as setting standards for doctors. So these are the five basic requirements you need to fulfill. Number one, you should have an acceptable primary medical qualification. So what is an acceptable primary medical qualification? This is basically your MBBS degree, but this degree has to be obtained from a university um, which is an acceptable university. So there is a world directory of medical schools. If your university name is in that directory, you are um, having an eligible degree. I will jot down the uh, link for this, uh, this list of universities if, in case if you want to uh, double check if you are having an acceptable degree. But if you have graduated from any government medical college in Sri Lanka, you should be eligible for applying with GMC registration. If you are a graduate from CITEM, still this name CITEM is under the list of universities which may be acceptable by GMC. So I would advise email GMC and clarify with them whether you are um, having an acceptable degree or not. So the second requirement is that your primary medical qualification should be able to um, verify using ECFMG system. ECFMG. What ECFMG do is basically they directly contact your university and verify your degree with them. Again, if you are having a degree from uh, you know well-known university or well-established university, this shouldn't be a problem for you. But I know doctors who have graduated from not from Sri Lanka, from elsewhere in the world where um, there are serious issues going on. For example, they, their university is no more because of the war or something else and it has been closed down. So the verification process is going to be a bit difficult one. But uh, the doctors I know who had these kind of problems have ultimately obtained GMC registration somehow. So it's not impossible. If you are having a complex situation like this, Better to email GMC again and then, uh, you know, clarify with them what is the process and is it worth um, for you to do the, you know, English exam and do PLAP 1, PLAP 2 and everything and then finally apply GMC registration. So the third requirement is that you have to show your knowledge and skills. Obviously, because you are going to come and work here as a doctor, you have to show that you are competent enough to work straight away, start your work. And um, for a junior doctor or for a fresh graduate, this is going to be your PLAB test. PLAB test is the, the test that is done by the General Medical Council and it basically assess your ability to work as a junior doctor. There are two parts of this test, PLAB 1 and PLAB 2 and um, once you par pass these two tests, you can apply for the GMC registration. You are a little bit experienced in your field and you have completed Royal College exams like MRCP, MRCS, or if CPAT, you can directly apply um, uh, for GMC registration via postgraduate pathway. So in this way, you are going to come and work as a little bit, um, uh, you know, little bit 
senior doctor or a doctor in the registrar level. If you are a consultant in your country, you can directly apply to the specialist registrar in the UK. There is another way um, called sponsorship pathway and uh, this is basically for very experienced doctors to come and uh, work in the UK. So the fourth thing GMC is going to ask you is your English uh, qualification or English language skills. This you can show by doing your IELTS exam or a OET exam. In IELTS, uh, GMC is uh, going to ask for at least uh, seven score seven in all four domains, and overall score should be seven point five. In OET, they are asking um, for grade B in all four domains. Again, I must mention here that um, you have to do IELTS before you book for your Plat Part One test, and. This is um, these English exams are valid only for two years. Say you have done your Plat Part One and Plat Part Two, and you are going to apply for GMC registration within this two-year time frame. You can apply with your first English uh, exam. But um, if you have uh, done your English exams and done your Plat, and two years have passed, and your English test is no more valid. Unfortunately, you have to do it again in order to be eligible to apply for GMC registration. So the fifth and last requirement is that your fitness to practice. This basically means that GMC is asking you to show that um, you, have, you have been continuously working or engaged in um, activities as a doctor. So here you have to show your five years history um, from uh, basically from the time uh, you are applying for GMC registration backwards until five years you have to show when and where you were working and with, with whom in which department etc. Uh, say you have qualified less than five years ago you have to show the evidence since your qualification until now. If you have been engaged in non-medical activities again you have to show evidence for this as well. Uh, if you have taken breaks like maternity leave or sick leave or maybe study leave, um, uh, sh again you have to show um, why and uh, when you have taken these leaves. This is uh, again a straightforward process if you have not taken any complex type of time off from your work. But if you have taken long breaks which you cannot explain to GMC and what you have been doing uh, in this period, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Um, so, again, if you are in doubt, uh, you can uh, you know you can email GMC and ask them what type of evidence you need to collect during this period. I was working as a demonstrator since my graduation until I start my um, internship. So they asked me to um, you know provide evidence for that. They sent me a form via email and I had to sign that form uh, from my uh, department head and send it back to them. So just look into your history for last five years and, and see if you need to you know, get things clarified before you jump into all these um, English exams, PLAP exams and all. So these days everyone is talking about uh, PLAP test getting replaced by some other test. That is true. According to the GMC website, they are going to replace PLAB exam um, by a test called UKMLA. Not only PLAB, um, they are going to basically um, uh, apply a new system to give to assess doctors, you know, uh, qualification in order to give GMC registration. Currently, uh, currently in the UK, uh, there are two types of doctors: UK graduates and foreign graduates. UK graduates um, get their primary medical qualification and then they apply uh, with that qualification uh, to GMC registration and, and other foreign doctors uh, fulfill all those uh, five criteria I just explained and then with that they, uh, they um, give their application to GMC. Uh, but in 2024 this is going to change and GMC says they are going to assess all the doctors in the same way with one assessment. Um, either you are from UK UK university or uh, from a university elsewhere or if you have been working in, in a certain field with some experience everyone has to face one assessment this is called you know, medical licensing assessment or MLA so 
So UK MLA is, is another big topic and we are not going to talk about it here. Uh, but basically this is uh, what going to happen in two years time. So if you are if you are having any worries or if you are you know you are doubtful whether you can go through this, whether you can be eligible to you know come and work in the UK, um, or if you have any other queries, you can you can directly ask me. I will try to help you as much as possible because I know um, sometimes you have no clue what to do. You have no clue, you know, where to find information. Um, I was there a few years ago and I had no one to help me but um, I was uh, googling each and everything <laughs> and um, I did everything by myself believe it or not within exactly one year I could complete complete the process um, so just to give you a little bit of motivation uh, in uh, when I look back into my case I am quite impressed the way how I handle things I in 2017 July I did get my IELTS results and straight away I could book for PLAB part 1 and then I completed PLAB 2 I had to do it twice because the first time I didn't take it very seriously and uh, I didn't pass the exam and the second time I got through and uh, yes then I did apply for GMC registration and also uh, apply for a few jobs and uh, my first job interview I got through and I got the job so 2017 July I passed my IELTS 2018 August I applied for my work visa and by 2018 November I came to the UK with my family and I started work as a junior doctor in an orthopedic department in 2018 December so um, things will go smoothly you just have to take you know one step at a time and, and then time will solve every you know every problem or every doubt you have so yes uh, all the best if you are you know if you are trying to get into this pathway and if you are already in the middle of the pathway um, I wish you everyone all the best and if you have any doubt again I am there to help you um, yes, we'll uh, catch you up with another video. See you, bye!